favorite Fast and Furious movie. Never watched a single one. Oh my! Hi, I'm Jake Modowick, and we're in the car with driver stuntman, Hoonigan Team Racing Team Principal, and for today at least, the busiest man in motorsports, Ken Block. I am in the car with my 63 Pontiac Star Chief. Ken, where are you and what are you in? <laughs> uh, I'm in my Ford Mustang Hunicorn 65 notchback, twin turbos sticking out of a hood of a nice Roush Yates V8. And I am positioned in the middle of my Hoonigan Racing shop. Uh, how long have you guys been in quarantine and how are you feeling your time? I was actually in Mexico at the WRC race down there when the lockdown started happening here in the States. Unfortunately, that event got cut short. We had an engine overheat, so I flew home a day early, which actually ended up being good because that the day after that, things started to get a bit hectic as far as flights and all that start was concerned. Uh, so it's been four or five weeks for me now that I've been home with my family. And we actually had one of our assistants here, my, my wife's assistant, actually got the virus, said it was terrible, yeah. dealt with it for about two weeks, and she's been back to work for us. Nice. Uh, yeah, a lot of wide open spaces in Utah, too. So easy to uh, easier to distance, I would assume. Yeah, the, the state isn't very densely populated. It's only about three million people. And there's only one big city. And that's where a lot of the cases have been. Uh, so it's it's really the ideal situation. It's, mm -hmm. it's the opposite of New York. So <laughs> that's you right. know, it's been a good place to be for this. You introduced a new car. You had a couple of teaser shots and people were guessing what it was. A lot of people were guessing Fox Body. I thought from that one darkened picture, it might be like a, a Mad Max style interceptor, like Falcon Interceptor or whatever that thing was. Because with the blower on the top, you know, it kind of gave me that vibe. But it's a Fox body Mustang. So tell us about it. It's got some special designers and stuff. Yeah, no, normally we don't do the process like this when we when we build a car like this. We usually wait till the end to kind of show uh, the behind the scenes. But for this project, we decided to pull back the curtain and show part of the process as we were doing it, you know? And so we've actually given out a lot of information we just would normally do. Part of that is the fact that like motorsports right now is, it's not happening and we want right. to fill some of that void to, you know, to entertain people that we know there's fans. Like I'm a fan of motorsports and I'm, I'm missing everything. So, yeah. uh, you know, we're trying to, to fill the void of that and all of our fans with some cool content. But the story is that ever since we built the Hunicorn, uh, you know, which was the first all wheel drive performance Mustang, you know, I've wanted to do that again. I'm a big fan of several eras of the, of the Mustangs and the Fox body is really one of them. And, and very particularly, I really like, you know, the, the eighties sort of over the top, white and white louvers everywhere type yeah. styled fox body my favorite engine uh setup for a car like this would be the the original roush yates engine that i had uh in the original unicorn setup nice mm -hmm. normally aspirated great power band lots of torque um but with the way that the world's going right now you know ford's had me put the uh twin turbo v6 in the huna truck mm -hmm. and uh and now they've got some very powerful EV setups, including that new drag car that they released just recently. So now it's like, oh, wow, there's actually a lot of options of things to do with Ford to kind of take this older project and really modernize it in a cool and different ways. Well, even with those, those would you just mentioned, you really can't go wrong. I mean, either, yeah. either the Twitter, the G, the Ford GT motor or the Roush Yates motor or whatever. Yeah, you'll be, I feel like you'll be good either way. And so then yeah. I read I read a story earlier, is Miami is where you're thinking about doing the next one? When I think of the 80s and all white, like, louver design yeah. on the taillights, with all that, that makes me then think of all white Countach or the all white Testarossa. Mm -hmm. And so then comes to mind Miami Vice. Like, that totally. was kind of the, the TV show that really epitomized that look and style back then. Really, that's what I've had in mind since day one when this whole concept came to mind. Now, doesn't mean Miami would like me to come there and do that. At this point, it's just a dream and a concept, but we'll see if it goes anywhere. 
Well, if it was a year or two ago, I would have said, come to Detroit, but now you've already been here. Like after after nine or eight, I was like, he's got to come to Detroit. He's got to come to Detroit. But finally you did. I really enjoy Detroit's history. I enjoy the new parts, but I really enjoy the old parts and I enjoy the decay and they didn't want to show the decay. So you just started a new show on Quibi with uh, Idris Elba. who I'm going to have to say is my second man crush uh, from the UK after Jason Statham. So uh, tell us about that. I met Idris a couple of years ago. He's a, a genuine car guy and actually sought me out because he was just a fan of the the things that I do from racing to making the Gymkhana videos. So he actually came out to one of my races and just chilled with me and talked about various ideas of things he wanted to do. And the, he really wanted to partner with me on a, on a couple of different ideas. And uh, I said, sure, but, you know, he has his own production company and uh, really wanted to have them put together these ideas. So I said, OK, I'll come back when you have something to pitch. And so they came back with this Quibi show. Uh, so they completely put it together. I, I literally gave them a bit of feedback on what they were doing. Uh, and other than that, I just showed up and had a good time trying to drive really random stuff and compete against Idris. So I think they did a great job. The Quibi platform's quite good. And he was actually pretty good behind the wheel. He had everything to gain. I had everything to lose. Right. Uh, you know, because I'm the race car driver. So right, if right. I get beat by an actor, like, that looks pretty bad. So I, I put a good effort in learning all the stuff that we had to Because we had to do, like... Some of it was really quite silly competitions, like a wall of death thing where you drive around in a, a circle on a vertical wall, drove a monster truck. It was quite fun, and I think the show turned out quite well. So yeah. you're a fan of his? Did you watch The Wire or Rock and Rolla or any of that good stuff that he was in back in the day? Uh, yeah, I've, I haven't watched all of The Wire. I've watched a bunch of it, though. Um, I wish I had more time to go back and watch all of it. It yeah. was a great show. And that's really where he really got known. But also Luther was quite big too. That right. that show was really where he he really took off, and then he ended up in just a bunch of great movies, including I've been watching a bunch of the Avengers stuff with my kids lately. Mm -hmm. Just you know, obviously stuck at home watching stuff I don't normally watch, yep. and seeing him in there uh, in several different of those movies too. I was watching the, the Can Am jump that you said is the longest jump you ever did in your life, or. That looked insane. So that was out in Utah somewhere, right? Yeah, in the state parks here in uh, in Utah, and go to this place called Swing Arm City, uh, and that's where that video is from, and a bunch of photos. And as we were getting ready to do that, you know, with my family getting, you know, my momentum trailer and everything already, I got a text from Leah Pruitt. She's one of the fastest women in the world. She's been down quarantining in Arizona, and so I said, hey you guys should come up. So uh, her and her friend, Tony Stewart, came and hung out and I was able to show them around one of my favorite places in the world. And the reason why I say that is, you know, I grew up skateboarding and snowboarding. So I look at a lot of train and a lot of things as if they're all skate parks. Right. And that place, Swing Arm City, genuinely is just a giant skate park for, for Can-Ams. Tell us about your first car. What is your first car? Do you remember it? Give us a memory. I, I get this question a lot. and Unfortunately, my first car was terrible. It was a, a hand-me-down from my Most mom, time. and it was a Toyota Corolla, four-door, like, yep. station wagon. Oh, wait like, a minute. Wait, what year? That could have been kind of, it, it would have been cool now. It wasn't cool then. It could have been cool no, I, don't, I, I haven't seen one in years. It was like an early 80s, 82, 83, somewhere around there. It was a gutless little economy car. You know, and I'm in high school, I wanted to have a cool car. And it was the yeah. opposite of a cool car at that time. Besides Avengers, anything else you're binging on while uh, binging on TV while you're in quarantine? The only thing I've made it part of the way through is uh, Tiger King, but that's it. Oh. Um, yes. Yeah, unfortunately, with my kids being home and having to be homeschooled, so yeah. a lot of that stuff's just taking a lot more work than you would expect. So by the time I get to the evening... <laughs> I'm more worn out than I usually am. I wish I would get some more time to relax and lay around, but it just hasn't been there. Tiger King is insane. I, I made fun of it for like two weeks and I finally watched it and I was like, it's totally compelling. Like I, I, I <laughs> yeah. now why, why everyone's watching it. I know you, you haven't had a lot of time in the past 15 years, 20 years, but favorite Fast and Furious movie? Never watched a single one. <laughs> Come on. Well, dude, I'll tell you this. If you want to make some social media magic, 
watch it for the first time and live tweet the whole thing. Because looking back 20 years on and live tweeting the whole thing, people would people would go nuts for that. Ken, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Hope to talk to you soon. And we'll be following the Huna Fox Mustang. Can't wait to see it in Jimmy Connor. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me on. Yep. Thanks. Talk to you. Appreciate it.